Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code, a place for you to learn with me as I dive deeper into the coding world. Before I start, this video is brought to you by SiteGround. If you're looking for a hosting service that is fast, reliable and has great customer service, please do check out the link in the description below. This is an affiliate link, so if you do end up being a SiteGround customer through my link, I will receive a little and this will be extremely beneficial for the channel. Or if you're wanting to learn more about Python, then make sure you check out my website, Instagram or GitHub for projects. The links for these will all be in the descriptions below, so please do check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me as I teach you through the basics. Today, we will be creating a dice rolling simulator and outputting the data into a graph that we can analyze and interpret. Okay, so the first things that we need to do are just import some stuff that we need. So to start with, we're gonna do from random import rand int, and that's because we only need the um, rand int method. And then from plotly, oh, plotly, if I can spell, dot graph objs, import bar and layout. That should be a capital L. And then from Plotly, import offline. Okay, so now what we want to do is just create a dice. So what we'll do is we'll actually create a class that will represent the dice. So class die. And so I'll just put a class representing a single die. And this the um, string here, the doc style actually, or the doc string actually just um, helps people when they come across this. If anyone was to check out my GitHub, they'd be able to see it um, and they'd understand what is happening. So the first thing that we're gonna do inside of this is just initialize the class. So we'll create an init method, which will take in two parameters. The first being self, and the second being the number of six, which is a, oh, the number of sides, which is a default value of six, because we only really want to know about six sided dices at the lowest. Obviously we can get eight sided dice, 10 sided dice, 12 sided dice, but we are going to actually specifically set out for six. And then self dot num underscore sides is equal to num underscore sides. Okay, so that will just create the six-sided die. Now we want to create a method for rolling. So def roll, and that will take in the self parameter. And I'll add a doc string here for just returning a random value between one and number of sides. So what we're going to have here is literally return round int one comma self dot num underscore sides. So if there isn't a number given, then this will randomize a number between one and six, where, whereas when the die is instantiated or the creation of the die, we will only, we, if we were to pass in say eight, then this will be a number between one and eight. So now we want to actually create the die. So die one is equal to the instantiation of the class, and then die two is equal to the second instantiation. Now we want to have a list for the number of, um, or the different results that we are gonna be getting from the uh, generated data. So results is equal to an empty list. And then for num in range 1000, so what we're actually going to be doing here is just rolling the dice a thousand times. Result equal die underscore one dot roll plus die underscore two dot roll. And then results dot append and we'll pass in the result down here. So if I just do this and then print results, what we should see Yep, so you'll see down here is we get a list of random results of numbers between 
1 and 12. There, we shouldn't see any 13s. We shouldn't see... As far as I'm aware, we can't. We shouldn't see any zeros, which I don't think we can. So that's good. So now if I take that out, what we now want to do is count how many times each number actually appears. So we'll do frequencies is equal to an empty list again. And then we'll create a max result variable, which will just be equal to die1.numsides plus die2 dot num sides so what the match result here is is just 12 but if we obviously were to change this to 8 and this one to 6 then the match result will change so this will actually work whether or not we are just changing the uh, number that's passed in here okay so next we want to actually loop through the values and see how often each frequency, um, each result ret like returns, how often the, the it occurs. So what we'll do is for value in range two and then max underscore result plus one, we are going to create a frequency variable and assign it to the results dot count of the value. And then we will use the frequencies list and we will just append the frequency. So now if I print frequencies and I save this, you see down here we have, without it actually telling us what each number is, we have 23. 56, 85, 105. So this is the amount of times each number has occurred. And it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are actually 11 different um, values here. And because we, when you roll a dice or two dice, the lowest number that you can get is 2. We are then getting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 which is 11 different numbers, which is why we only get 11 returned down here. So next we want to actually create the bar so that we can see it or the chart so that we can see this data as a much more visual representation rather than these numbers down here. So if I create the X value and just assign it to a list of range from two through to match result plus one. So what we're doing here is we're just putting on the X value, which is the value, the X axis down the bottom. We are creating a list of numbers from two through to 12. Well, through to 13, but because it's up to, but not including, we are only doing it up to 12. And then we'll create a new um, variable called data. And this will be a list of the bar that we are actually importing from Plotly. So this will take in X and the Y value. So X is X values and then Y is frequencies. So what we'll be doing here is we will be plotting the X value created here and then the Y value, which is frequencies, which has been created through this for loop method here. Now, x-axis underscore config is equal to a dictionary. So it will say title result. And then the tick is one. And then y-axis config is equal to title and frequency of result. Now my underscore layout, this is a variable that we are creating just to actually put everything together so that we can get the layout of a title and the x-axis and the y-axis before plotting it. So my layout is equal to layout, title, and the title will say results of rolling two six-sided dice 
1000 times. And then we will have x axis is equal to x axis config, and then y axis is equal to y axis config. Now, what we want to do is just also have an offline plot so we can actually get this without any um, needing like access to the internet. So offline dot plot data data layout is my layout. So what we're doing here is we're creating a dictionary. The first or the key will be data and the value will be this data here that we have created this variable. And then the, lay the layout key, the value for that will be my layout, which we've just created the line above. And file name, if I just call this two underscore D six, and then save. Now, if I head over to my terminal, CD into my desktop, and then Python rolling dice, So this offline plot will take us over to our browser, but we don't actually need it because this is just a local file. But as you can see down here, we now have the y-axis title, the title of the whole graph, the x-axis title that goes from two through to 12, and then the occurrence of the numbers all the way up to 160, well, 163. And the good thing about this is if you hover over each one, it tells you exactly how much in a tuple. So the first number will be the actual number or the value that we have rolled. And the second number is the um, amount of times the value has occurred. So what you'll see here is seven is actually the most predominant one, followed by eight, and then six. So the main three numbers that occur the most are six, seven, and eight. And it seems quite heavily in the middle. And that is probably because there are quite a few different ways that you can get seven from one and six, two and five, three and four. Whereas with 12, you have to get six and six. So there's more chance of you getting these numbers because there are more outcomes or more ways of getting this outcome. That's all for today's video. Hopefully this has helped your understanding of how we can use Python's built-in methods to create data that represents a real life object before transferring that data over to a way where we can visually represent it. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover further, please don't hesitate in reaching out to me by dropping a comment below on Instagram or through my website. Stay tuned as in my next video, I will be looking at functions part two. If you liked what we've been through today and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Thank you and see you next time.